Hi, in today's video we'll be looking at uh, doing a file recovery of a second-hand hard drive. The drive was purchased at a local uh, retailer as refurbished. So it makes you wonder just how much stuff is on a refurbished drive, if anything. I don't know, let's check it out. Before we start though, I just want to let you know that this video was recorded on my phone and a screen capture as well to go with it. The screen capture seems to have been lost. And so there's a few times in the video where I'll be referring to the screen and you probably won't be able to see it. Fortunately though, that's a very small amount of it and the rest of it's appearing in camera. It's not the best video you're ever gonna see on the subject, but I thought it was actually worthwhile putting up the way it is. You know, thanks for your patience and uh, we'll try and make sure we don't delete files we shouldn't delete again in the future. The irony of that is not lost on me. Hi, uh, welcome. Yesterday I picked up a, uh, a small secondhand SATA drive from a local retailer. It's obviously a refurb drive. Apparently it, it's uh, tested as okay. It's a Seagate drive, it's 250 gigabytes. So in 2020, that's kind of small. But what I was curious about was, is when they, when they uh, say it's okay, what do they do to the drive? And what data was on it before I got it? That's what we're gonna find out. To do that, I'm just gonna use one of these SATA USB adapters. So if we uh, look around the front there, we can plug her in. This one's a, a Comcell USB 3. Okay, she plugs in pretty easily. Now I need to plug a power cable into this as well. And do that first actually. What I'm pretty sure of is that they probably didn't delete all the data off the drive. It's pretty common. So we'll see if it's actually in a readable state straight away. I don't think it will be. But I've got an idea about that. Plug our USB adapter in. Right. As we expected, we're not getting anything that looks like a drive popping up, are we? You can go down here to your USB. Yeah. Open devices. If I click on my USB device here and look at hardware, Yep, it does actually see the hard drive. So I'll bet the petition data was probably deleted, possibly replaced, maybe, and the data was, and the drive was just uh, put back out for resale. That's a problem because these days recovery tools are so good and they are so easy to come by. Let's take a quick look at one called Disk Drill. I don't know if you can see the screen, and you obviously can't see the screen, but it's showing us that we actually have this uh, secondary drive. This USB drive here has popped up, has, has appeared in it. Mm. Now what we're interested in, in here is this, this drive entry here. It looks about right, doesn't it? It's saying it's called ST250 MD whatever. Go to recovery methods. Uh, search for lost partitions, let's have a look. Okay, 
Okay, search for lost data. I've done this with other drives, but I haven't done it with this one before. So, but my gut feeling is that they probably didn't destroy all the data that's on the drive. And that would be quite common. So if you're, if you're uh, upgrading your computer, you're trading your old computer in, be mindful that the data on that drive is probably recoverable. So if you have banking data on there or personal photos or something like that, uh, I'm not saying that this will work with this drive, it, maybe they've completely formatted it and, and destroyed all the existing data before it was put back on uh, back on sale, but yeah, it's quite common. Right, so what more will be found? It's telling us it's found two lost partitions on that drive, which is empty a minute ago. Okay. Can we see? We've got a 500 meg partition, which must be some sort of recovery reboot partition. And that's probably the Windows partition. Search for lost data. We can see it's found a bunch of files already. Uh, found review found items. Okay, so what, what are these things it's finding? They might just be junk. They might they might not be real files at all. Um, that looks like real data to me. Yeah. Users. Public user. Account pictures, downloads. There's nothing much in them, which is good. So hopefully the person uh, did destroy the data before they gave the drive up, which is fine. Uh, what I wanted to get to is actually what you can do as a strategy for uh, not destroying the drive before you trade it in or, or sell it or something like that. Is that you need to fill up the drive full of junk and then delete your stuff and then fill up the drive full of junk again. That's The reason for that is it's the way that uh, hard drives allocate uh, blocks to files or pieces of data, pieces of their storage area to each file. Because your files are not stored as, as one file, they're actually stored as lots of small fragments across the hard drive itself. Okay, we've got 13 gigabyte of stuff. What's in program files? Desktop, Explorer, common files. Looks like a pretty clean Windows, Windows installation to me. Not that I'm an expert on that on such things, but uh, yeah, so most of the files are in, in our Windows partition here. Program files, not much in that. It says we found eight videos, 175 uh, audio files, a lot of pictures. Well, Windows has a lot of pictures with it. It's a lot of uh, stock media that comes with Windows. Common files, media player. Mm. While that does that, let's go on to how this is, this is possible. Let's have a quick talk about how hard drives work. Your hard drive, when it's formatted, the you might realize that the hard drive resembles something that looks like a, a record. Uh, internally, there's multiple disks, so it has multiple heads. And 
on each surface, this disc surface, the head is uh, stepping in or out, and the disc is spinning in this direction. The head hovers over a certain part, portion of the disc, picks up a little block of information. Now, it's easy to think about hard drives as being a big collection of blocks. All these little block fragments. When the drive is initially set up or initialized, all of the space available on it is in the free list. There's a there's kind of two lists, or two ways you can think about hard drives. All the free space is all linked together. So there's little tiny blocks which are about I guess it depends on what kind of hard drive you've got or the age of the drive. Let's say they're, they're 32K. So they're quite small in terms of um, what modern file sizes are. So what actually happens is when we store, uh, when we're on our computer and we go to, to store data to the hard drive, the operating system requests a bunch of these free blocks where they are on the drive this block here might be over here this one here might be over there that one there might be somewhere else on the drive entirely because the, the, the drive is spinning so it can't just store all the data in, in a consecutive run around that location there might be something else already stored there, or it might be just the end of this particular section here, so the data gets stored across wherever the free space is found. Initially, when the drive is empty, it should all be consecutively. Well, let's say it's not. This is what defragmentation is all about, or fragmentation is about. Uh, when we store a file, it, we go to save a file onto our hard drive, it's grabbing from this free list of places here, and then stores a bit of the data from the file at this location, and then stores the next bit of the data at this location, and the next bit of it over here. When we reload it, the hard drive spins up again, it finds the first part, then jumps to the next part, jumps to that part, and that's so on. If we store the same file again, if we try and save this, the file over the top of each other, now what's likely to happen here is it's going to not overwrite these blocks first. It's going to grab three new blocks, and which might be anywhere, they might be over here. Let's say they're over there. Let's say that these three blocks here are represented as over here, right? So our, our file is rewritten and it gets stored at this location here. This block points to that block there, links to that block there, and our data is stored in that sequence of blocks. Then what the operating system will do is it will unlink or, or remove these existing blocks of the old file and put them back in the free space. So we kind of have these two, these two heaps. We've got used blocks in a heap over here, right? And this is what files are made up of in in any order, it can be whatever it wants. And we've got a free list of blocks over here. Now, we're doing a very scaled down uh, <laughs> version of it, but that's pretty much what's happening. We've got this kind of free space here, which is free space is just blocks that aren't yet used by the you, the user, or someone else. We've got the files that are used as well in this used, used heap over here. So it knows not to, not to store data in these blocks here when we save something new because that would destroy existing information. We don't want that. That creates a problem when we go to delete files or completely... Um, uh, throw away old hard drives for example is that you might find yourself in need of updating your uh, system you might run through and delete a file that has your banking data in it let's say this one and 
and that file might have been stored on this location of the disk here. The operating system will, will release these currently used blocks, which will, would be stored over here somewhere. They will be put back onto the free heap. Now it depends on your hard drive, the drivers, etc. behind how the software chooses to do this. But this is a very, yeah, that's a problem. What it doesn't do when it releases these old blocks is it doesn't erase them. It doesn't. It, there's no point for it to go back through these old, currently recently freed blocks, and clear those blocks out. Which means that if you use a piece of software like we're using here, this disk drill software, it can look through and find files that are that were in the used heap. But I can also look through files that are in this old free heap as well and see if they make any sense. There are tools that actually do a very good job of this reconstruction, which is how these kind of undelete uh, programs work. So when a file is deleted, that data on the disk is not destroyed, which means if you have tr things like your banking data or you know your your pictures or your videos of your kids or, wh or whatever you have on your on your computer. What you really need to do is you need to once you've once you've backed up all your information off this computer, you've copied it from this computer to your new computer. When you're happy that you've got all the data, there's no rush about this stuff. Once you once you're happy you've got it all, then you go okay. I want to I want to delete these files and then deliberately store junk on the hard drive and fill the whole hard drive up. This doesn't guarantee that data can't be recovered because uh, what you'll find is very small files can be can have, have many copies of themselves in other blocks which is a pain in the backside. Whether that's true for all hard drives I don't know. Whether, you know, whether um, very skilled hard drive recovery companies could, could actually find data on, on drives that have been overwritten entirely. That's a question for debate. I don't know. Maybe it's possible, maybe it isn't. Maybe with certain brands it's more possible than others. Don't know. Uh, our recovery on our computer over here has got, say, 30 gig of files. These just seem to be actually just... Uh, Nothing of any real uh, interest to anyone else, but looks looks more like just a pretty much fresh install of Windows with maybe a few applications installed as well. That's pretty good. I mean, good on them, on them for going through the, the trouble of getting rid of their old data. Uh, there's probably applications that that do file destroying. Uh, you don't want to run this stuff on your nice new computer, obviously, but you. Uh, certainly on a computer you're getting rid of that's probably the best best way even when we format a drive these fast format methods they don't actually clean out all of the data in the free blocks when the data is when the drive is in its initial initialized state they're not empty these blocks aren't blocks of d information that on the disk they're not empty at all so we need to go through them and write data to it you might um, grab some uh, video editing software or something like that and dump some big files. You know, just keep doing that until the hard drive is full. Um, once you're happy with that, make sure you've deleted every bit of content of yours off this drive. Generate some more, you know, just useless, useless data and then maybe try a disk recovery over it see if, see if you can find any old files and then once you're happy uh, get rid of it hmm. well, I think in this case here the person's probably uh, done okay they haven't actually unwittingly um, released their information my dog's getting rather uh, hmm. Aren't you? Yes, dog. Very good dog. 
Right, same we found 25 gigabyte of files. These are all just standard Windows files, to be honest. Nothing special there. Just, just think we found a, a bunch of video files. Anyway, we might stop that there and uh, hopefully it gives you something to think about. You know, when you are upgrading your old computer, giving away your old computer, whatever you happen to do, put some thought into destroying the old data that's on it. Um, we, you don't want to be a victim of um, just convenience sometimes. I mean, I know it's more convenient not to do that or it's convenient to assume that the people on the, who you're selling this thing to or won't look or uh, if you're upgrading your computer to a store or trading it into a store then you would think that they wouldn't wouldn't allow that in the first place but as you can tell um, in this case here that, that's that's a real thing there are, but luckily we haven't found anything that's very incriminating and I'm not going to search the whole drive because I really don't I don't want to know what's on it to be honest Thanks for watching. Hopefully it's giving you something to think about. And I'll catch you up some other time. Bye.